So it has been a year since Isonzo was released. This game was the third in the World War I game series, starting with Verdun, then into Tannenberg, and now with the most beautiful of them all. It was a massive step up going into the Italian front and of course fighting in the beautiful mountains. Not just graphically, but mechanically, adding things in like cutting through barbed wire, breaching charges, firing mortars, and more expansions to the classes. But Isonzo has recently had a new map, Monte Biana. Through the last year or so, we have gained four major updates, from Caporetto in December of 2022, to Piave in March of this year, which I think personally is one of my more favourite maps, to Grappa in May of 2023, and now we have Monte Piana. This is a beautiful new map set atop the mountains of Italy, like many of the others, yet this one seems a little bit more structured. They've definitely put emphasis on trenches, and trust me, you need them in this one. Because of the map and the way it's set out, and being a little bit more flat, you will be sniped from afar. It is the most brutal of them all, especially for those marksman classes. Being able to take hits from miles away, when you're playing as a sniper, you You'll be the top of the leaderboard but when there's an enemy you're gonna have to keep your head down it's got a very iconic little shrine in the middle of it that looks goddamn beautiful and all in all i'm really enjoying the way it's playing but let's talk a little bit about isonzo's year and what exactly they've accomplished you see the game released to a little bit of fanfare but not perhaps what i think i would have expected the world war one game series has always been popular but not necessarily successful the Carporetto was a free expansion that came out earlier on, with December bringing in the map, and of course throughout early 2023 bringing in more new weapons, more custom match options, prestige modes, challenges, so on and so forth, with a few extra maps. We then got max support towards the end of 2023 along with this new map, but it's not over. You see, the future is still coming there's going to be some free expansions on the horizon. The first being White War. Now we know very little about it, but it definitely is going to be taking us into the snowy mountains, and boy, it's going to be interesting. Along with free expansions, there will be some DLCs, Isonzo First Wave being the most noticeable. It will have reserve units, veteran units, elite units, and alpine units that will just, as far as I know, be skins. But we will be heading into the Alps and fighting in snowy maps very, very soon, with two new maps. The first First supposedly coming still at the end of 2023, yet we haven't actually heard too much about it yet, so could be delayed. Then the second map coming in 2024. Then it goes into the Solstice, a free expansion with once again two new maps, new uniforms, part of a DLC, and new weapons, which are added in all of it, which one can only assume is pretty much the opposite of what we're getting in the Winter Alpine update. But through all of this, bug fixes, performance optimizations, historical accuracy improvements, and offensive gameplay balances is going on. The Isonzo team, despite the kind of small and dwindling player base at the moment, are still bringing in plenty of updates and still doing a really good job with it. It is really nice to see they're not giving up on the game just yet and especially playing in the evenings the peak of players is starting to go up almost hitting 300 concurrent on steam of course it's not a steam only game anymore being on epic and playstation and so on and so forth the consoles i haven't heard too much about it but i'm assuming it's just as popular as on pc so without further ado let's take a little bit of a look at this new map Okay, well I've decided to pick the Sniper, which is a bit of a rarity for me because most of the time the classes are filled up. However, despite the gameplay early on in the video, which was an online game, I decided to launch it with bots just so I could have a bit more free reign to show you guys exactly what this map is about. And as you can see, just like all the others, it is goddamn beautiful. I do end up using mostly my pistol here because, as you can see, pistols are just way more useful. That's why I like the smoke. The stuff like the smoke coming out of your end of the pistol as you're reloading and firing after letting off a few rounds is so satisfying. God, that was a bit dodgy there. But hey, let's go back to our sniper, see what kind of damage we can do. So, what is Monte Piana? Well, this is actually a very important map, since it's a very pinnacle point of the First World War. During the so-called White War, which is an update, as mentioned, we'll be getting later on, which I'm assuming is why they bought this map in now, by the way, so they can put some snow on it a little bit later. But this Monte Piana was a big fighting point. Of course, the White War was between the Austro-Hungarians and the Italian armies. The Austrians had occupied the northern summit of Monte Piana, whilst the southern summit 
was in Italian hands. So there was a lot of fighting going over between both. By the way, what you just saw was me knocking down uh, some sort of enemy spawn. That is a thing that I've only just realized you can do in this game. But oh god and people can come around the corner when you're reloading or bandaging. Yet when Italy declared war on Austro-Hungary on the 24th of May 1915, eight battalions were sent to Monte Piana. This was going to be a huge section that was definitely worth fighting over. It was part of the operational sector of the 4th Army, commanded by Lieutenant General Luigi Nava. Yes, there was a general in the Italian army called Luigi. Can we, can we maybe get that out of our systems before we go on to the rest of this story? Because it's not quite as funny <laughs> on the 24th of May, though, Piana was occupied by two platoons of Alpine troops of the 96th Company. Along with some other regiments, around 8.30, they were hit by artillery shells, soon becoming among the first Italians to fall on the mountains in less than two years. By the end of this battle, there were around 14,000 victims on both sides. It was an incredibly bloody battle, fought at the summit of a mountain against the backdrop of the beautiful Dolomites, a juxtaposition between some of the most glorious places on earth with one of the more bloody battles of the First World War, especially on the Italian and Austro-Hungarian sides. Now, despite this, two years of war on Monte Piana essentially led to nothing. The two contenders fought for patches of land and much like most of the other fighting in World War One, ended in it just being abandoned. The Italian units decided to retreat and take sides on the grapple line in an attempt to resist the Austro-Hungarian offensive, but really, at the end of the day, nothing real value was gained. Because of the absolute horrific death here, there have been some reconstructions of volunteers putting up sections of the dry stone wall that was collapsed during the winter, remains of the old shelters and the wooden structures that we can see a little bit on this map that I'm playing right now. This is trying to be restored by volunteers on Monte Piano to try and remember the people that fought and died in this bloody battle, along, of course, with the museum. Because... What would it be without a good old museum? And this is one thing that I think the World War I series developers are doing really well, is they are adding in historical accuracy and they are bringing in stories that are not as well told. The Eastern Front and the Western Front have been told over and over again. But heading into the Dolomites to fight is not just a beautiful backdrop and something more varied for a new World War I game, but is also something incredibly different. Something that we've never had before. And I'm very, very glad that that's what they chose to go with. So, where is Isonzo going now? Well, we've got the Winter War update and we also have the Solstice update. At least four new confirmed maps, but I'm sure plenty other things are coming as well with new weapons and some DLCs. These DLCs will include a lot of cosmetics, but hopefully we will get some extra content later on down the line, maybe this time for free. But what they are doing is a fantastic job of recreating history in an authentic and I would say respectful way. Still improving the bits from the past updates to try and balance it out and make it a bit more fitting to the game that we have now. But hey, at least they're doing what most other developers couldn't. And that's making a game that people actually enjoy. 